Ryan last night tweeted out the word the Ninkimons. It's been ages trying to figure out what it meant. Turned out it was just their autocorrect trying to put the only ones. It's now my new favorite word. And guess what? It's your favorite word now too. Here, with that in mind, is some wrestling news. WWE live events could possibly be returning soon. A WWE tag team has been pulled from television and which WWE star is returning this Friday on SmackDown? Find out in a little bit. Contrary to what you might see or read today, there was one genuine shock return to WWE TV last night, and it was people, actual people. There were real fans at WWE Raw last night for the first time since March. We had actual fans at the Performance Center. So Brian Alvarez went onto Twitter just before Raw went to air last night to say that a select few legitimate fans were at the show tonight in addition to the trainees. This was corroborated by John Alba of Spectrum Sports 360 who said there are a small amount, small amount of fans in attendance for tonight's WWE tapings. I was told by one source that some are friends of performers. Now all those that were there, uh, not as trainees but as actual fans assigned waivers uh, to say they won't spoil Raw or any of the TV stuff that they see which is very good it seems like they've for the better part stuck to that as well uh, one slightly concerning uh, part of this of, of the return of fans is a follow-up tweet from Brian Alvarez now you'll have heard in our other news video that a WWE trainee who was at the Performance Center last week, tested positive for you know what. And as a result of that, TV tapings are reportedly canceled today and everybody's getting tests and uh, providing that everyone's got clear tests, they'll all carry on TV. Uh, Alvarez tweets out, um, this, is, this is a bit of a worry. On top of nobody finding out about the you know what failure until it hit social media, I was told by multiple sources that WWE would not allow anyone in the crowd at the Raw taping to wear masks. Ooh, I mean, that's Alvarez and uh, multiple sources from Alvarez saying that, which is a worry because like, masks are, are not only a wonderful fashion item now, <laughs> Where's the cultaholic face masks? I'm just saying. Uh, but, but now they're becoming mandatory in most places. Like here in the UK, you can't get on public transport without a mask. So it's essential everywhere. The idea of not having fans wear masks. like, And this plays into the whole idea that you can imagine somebody in higher up. I don't want it to say Vince McMahon. It's easy to always say Vince McMahon. But probably Vince McMahon would imagine that masks would ruin the aesthetic of a show. You can almost picture that conversation going down, can't you, if this is the case. Uh, that's a worry. Uh, hopefully that's something that will be that will be remedied going forward. But the return of fans very much feels like the return to normality a little bit. And uh, it looks as if WWE have plans to get back to normal very soon. PW Insider saying, while nothing official has been set in motion, we can confirm World Wrestling Entertainment has begun working to strategize potential courses of action towards getting WWE live events up and running again. We are told that the company is hoping if all works out to be prepared to hold live events by the end of the summer. So that's not far away. I think there are still plans to host a big SummerSlam event in front of a live crowd. So this is kind of on course for what they want to do there. PW Insider has also been told some in the company are even hoping to be running events outside of TV tapings at the Performance Center or Full Sail Live by August. But others we've spoken to uh, believe that time frame is premature. The entire process has been described as being very day to day with plans and strategies quickly changing as the company works to establish different contingency plans. WWE is very early on in the process We've been cautioned a large percentage of the company's live event staff remain on furlough. WWE has not run a live event or taping outside of Orlando since the 9th of March, Monday Night Raw in Washington, D.C. There is obviously that desperation to get back to normal. I think the world is keen to get back to normal now. Like, shops have started reopening in a lot of places. Like uh, here, I know quite a few places in America, shops are reopening again and non-essential businesses. Like, over here in the UK, uh, 
day, several clothes outlets open for the first time since the lockdown and there's queues around the blocks for it because people are just desperate for a bit of normality. And with wrestling, there's no different. They are keen just to get things up and running again very, very soon. So we could potentially have, have live events in front of actual crowds in WWE or in, on or around SummerSlam. We'll break down Monday Night Raw a bit later on today. Raw graded with you and I. We'll give everything on Raw a lovely letter. And Ross will be here with the WTF moments, all the shocking moments and the weird and wonderful highlights from last night's episode of Raw. A WTF moment in itself belongs to the USA Network, who are apparently very upset with WWE for its recent creative changes. This comes from Dave Meltzer of the Wrestling Observer, uh, who says that the USA Network are very unhappy. He says, I know USA are actually unhappy with the change, very unhappy. I don't think they were happy with the ratings. They understood the ratings. They were told a long time ago, this is a rebuilding period and it was going to take time and they understood that. So the idea then of WWE removing Paul Heyman, putting in a new creative team, leaves them feeling very unhappy, potentially because WWE have said, look, this is the way things are going to be whilst we rebuild. Just, you know, just just bear with us, you know, stay, stay the course. And then for them to go, oh, we're changing all our creative team. They're probably quite upset with that and probably quite concerned as well because there's so much there's so much flux at the moment with the product that by changing even more, it adds a little bit of concern to the USA network. So reportedly very unhappy this morning. A lot of unhappy faces in the WWE locker room regarding one particular tag team and that being the Forgotten Sons. Fightful Select pick up the story on what is happening with Jackson Riker, Wesley Blake and Steve Cutler. And it turns out that Jackson Riker's tweets have done quite a lot of damage to the Forgotten Sons. So you may know that Jackson Riker sent out a tweet supporting Donald Trump uh, during the height of the Black Lives Matter protest. And this hasn't gone down very well with a lot of people in WWE. Uh, Fightful Select say that Riker's tweets landed him in a lot of hot water in the locker room. And as a result of this, they are being kept off of TV for now. Uh, the report basically says that whilst Jackson Riker's comments have upset a lot of people like Kevin Owens and Sami Zayn and others in the locker room, there's a lot of sympathy for Wesley Blake and Steve Cutler, who was just sort of caught in the crossfires of this on the wrong on the wrong side of the tracks, uh, in the in the eyes of the locker room at least. The idea that they're lumped in with somebody who tweeted pro-Trump stuff during the Black Lives Matter protests is. It hasn't gone unnoticed. There's a lot of sympathy towards them. It's uh, what will happen with the Forgotten Sons, we don't know. We do know they were set to get involved with the New Day. There were plans to move the Forgotten Sons up the tag team ranks pretty quickly, but it looks as if for now that's all been quietly shelved. From Forgotten Sons to a son that doesn't want to be forgotten. Money, 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 money. Dollar, dollar, a dollar, dollar. If you watch that picture long enough, it might start dancing for you. Maybe not. Shane McMahon in the news. He appeared on the post show for the latest episode of The Last Ride. And it looks as if he has thrown down a challenge for The Undertaker. Uh, it was brought up uh, when Shane McMahon was looking back at the Extreme Rules match and how The Undertaker had stated uh, in the last episode that it wasn't going to be his final match. And Shane McMahon is keen to have another go around with The Undertaker. He said, and I quote, I know I got one more with him, so I'm ready. I'll challenge him now. I just did. I've got one more. I know I've got one big one. I want a rematch. Has it started dancing yet? No, it doesn't. Hell in a Cell 2. I, I was that close, referring to when Undertaker moved off the announce table. And, and Shane went crashing through it. I was that close. Let's continue this story. Shane wants to go at it once again with The Undertaker inside of Hell in a Cell. You can watch WrestleMania 32 to see how it went first time round and make your decision from there whether you'd want to see that again. Impact Wrestling currently going through that list of released WWE stars with the same vigor 
as a kid goes through the Argos catalogue just before Christmas. It seems like Impact are trying to uh, associate with pretty much every release WWE star at this point. Gallows and Anderson have been in the conversation. EC3's been in the conversation. Even Rockstar Spud was very briefly. We've seen the debut of Diana Perrazzo, the virtuosa. Tynara Conti has been hinted ahead in that way as well, as has Heath Slater. And the latest uh, is Rusev, who has been possibly connected with Impact Wrestling. Couple of rumors doing the rounds uh, that Ruru or Miro uh, could be heading to Impact Wrestling very soon. On his Twitch just the other night, he decided to address those Impact rumors by saying, I understand why you think it's me, but I can't confirm or deny. Or I don't want to confirm or deny. Keeping it vague. Uh, he's been playing a lot of Alien Nation on Twitch lately as well. Just as I was finishing No Mercy on the Cultaholic Twitch stream, suddenly Rusev popped up and I was like, well, I can't compete with that, so you'll go play Watch Rusev instead. Uh, for the latest Rusev news, uh, follow him on Twitch. Were you convinced that Drake Maverick's firing from WWE was a work as opposed to a real thing that was happening? Well, you're not the Ninkymons, because it turns out that a lot of people were under the impression that it was all a big old work by the WWE. We can definitively answer that question, thanks to PW Insider. Was Drake Maverick's firing a work? No. No, it wasn't. Drake Maverick was legit fired from WWE. PW Insider uh, has been told that Maverick was not aware he was going to be offered a new deal until the day his Cruiserweight Championship tournament was filmed at the WWE Performance Center. And he went even by that point, by the time he rocked up at the Performance Center that day to film bits for the Cruiserweight Championship tournament, he'd already started uh, conversations with independent promotions. He'd be sharing videos of his matches at Progress and other places places. He trademarked Spud and Rockstar Spud, ready to get back into the world. He'd started working on stuff with EC3 as well, and you could see some trails of that on Twitter, but then he turned up for the day and they, they asked him to stay. And the rest, of course, is history. So if anybody asks you, it wasn't a work shoot or a shoot work, it didn't work itself into a shoot or shoot itself into a work. It, it was, he, he got sacked and got offered his job back. All right. Bobby Lashley, but not Bobby Leesley. We welcome back Bray Wyatt this Friday to SmackDown. We found out on Raw last night uh, that a very special episode of the Firefly Funhouse is going to air this Friday on SmackDown. Welcoming back Bray Wyatt, who's been off TV, recently become a dad again. Him and Jojo had a beautiful baby, so he's had some dad time. Oh, the fiend reading bedtime stories is going to be a treat. Uh, but I'm expecting Bray Wyatt to immediately sort of pick up where he left off with Braun Strowman. I feel like Miz and Morrison were just sort of gap fillers whilst whilst Bray Wyatt was on uh, was on paternity leave, it feels like. Lots of unfinished business, and it looks as if Bray Wyatt will jump straight back in with Braun Strowman when the Firefly Funhouse returns on Friday. Oh, I imagine there's a John Cena puppet just in the background, like, looking terrifying. That might be a thing. That might be a thing. Oh, feel a bit. Ooh. Stay safe. Love you. Bye.